All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. Uh, my name is John Laffey. And in today's uh, presentation, we're going to be taking a look at some best practices uh, for working remotely or from your house uh, securely. Um, obviously, with everything that's been going on with the pandemic, we know that a, a large number of workers have been forced to relocate to their homes. Um, for some, this is uh, quite possibly the first time they've had to do that as well. So to that end, we decided to put together this presentation to hopefully um, inform some best practices and, and guidance on, on how to best stay safe when working remotely. All right, so before we begin, uh, everyone has been muted for call clarity. Um, this slide deck will be available shortly after the conclusion of today's presentation at our website, pjr.com. Uh, under the training link, you will find a link to past webinar slides where you can download this slide deck as well as any slide deck from any of the various webinars that we give on um, a number of standards and topics. Additionally, a recording of this webinar uh, will be available for review on YouTube. Uh, we have a channel on YouTube, simply navigate to their site, search for Perry Johnson Registrars uh, to check them out, and it's all free. Uh, before we begin, I just wanted to relay a message from our president, uh, Terry Bavoyage. He would like to thank you all for joining us today um, in these unprecedented times. We know many of you are working from home and that many of you are working with sensitive information. Our hope is to inform you with some best practices and advice for staying safe while working from home in today's presentation. If you have any questions or would like to get more information regarding ISO 27001 or information security in general, please call us at 800-800-7910 or visit our website at www.pjr.com. And he'd sincerely like to thank you all for attending and ask that you all stay safe and healthy. And um, we're hopeful to be getting through this as soon as possible, just like I'm sure all of you are. All right, so in today's presentation, specifically what we're gonna look at is basically two different angles. Um, first, we're gonna go through uh, advice from for employees working remotely, and then we're gonna get into some advice for organizations and system administrators. So the folks who actually are in charge of writing policies or configuring systems and access um, and all that fun stuff. And then lastly, uh, at the conclusion, I will take as much time as needed to answer any questions you might have to the best of my ability. If you do have a question during the presentation, feel free to go ahead and open the questions tab on your GoToWebinar control panel and you can go ahead and, and fire off the question immediately so you don't forget it and then at the end I will open that up and uh, answer all the questions in the order I received them. All right employees working from home and just a quick preface obviously I think we're all aware with what's been going on there's a huge number uh, of displaced employees who uh, if we're lucky enough to still be working have to do so from home um, and as I mentioned, in many cases, uh, this might be the first time that you've had to do this. Um, and so from that angle, uh, I'm hoping to give just some, some best practice and practical advice on um, you know, how to go about that. Um, if you have worked from home in the past, hopefully this advice will um, you know, give you some additional things to think about in terms of security, which uh, you know, quite frankly, might not be the first thing that folks are concerned with um, when they're relocated. Uh, and forced to work from home. I think in many cases, um, we're just trying to get connected and, and be able to be productive and security is probably an afterthought. So with that in mind, uh, the first point of advice here for employees is to separate your work and personal activities. So if, it, if you have been um, given a company furnished piece of equipment, such as a laptop or some other device uh, to conduct work activities, use it only for that. Um, avoid using it for, checking social media, paying your bills, doing banking, anything personal. Um, you know, certainly avoid using personal email or personal cloud storage accounts for work purposes. Um, it, makes, it might seem innocent enough, but you could unknowingly uh, be exposing your machine to potential viruses or infections that could ultimately compromise, you know, the information that you work with and the, the systems that you connect to for your company. Um, to that end, force yourself to use personal devices to perform non-work related tasks. Um, you know, I have my personal desktop computer set up right behind my work issued uh, laptop computer that I'm giving this uh, presentation on today. Um, so 
Um, and, and lastly, if you if you must use a personal device to conduct work, uh, consider creating a separate user account that is only used for work activities. So just if you're able to create a new user account and use that only for work activities to try and create some separation or segregation uh, between your personal work or your personal activities and your work activities. Uh, the next point that you might not think about is to be aware of your surroundings. Um, this may or may not be something uh, that is been part of your work activities in the office, but I know many organizations do have clear screen and clear desk policies and different classifications of information with different rules surrounding who's allowed to, to see that information. Um, but it's quite likely that if you're working from home, uh, there very there may very well be um, other members of your family who are forced to be at home as well as we're going through this. And you need to still safeguard your, your work computer and screen from others at your house. Um, you wanna make sure that you're continuing to adhere to your company policies regarding who is authorized to view the information you're working with. And again, if these haven't been clearly spelled out for you by your, by your organization, uh, I would recommend that you just adopt a clear screen approach and certainly lock your computer anytime you're not using it. Um, it may seem kind of silly, but depending on the type of information you're working with, um, you certainly want to make sure even close friends and family aren't, aren't looking at something that they shouldn't be looking at. Uh, next, uh, which is a best practice always, but bears repeating, is to keep software and antivirus up to date. Uh, patches are absolutely critical for securing discovered vulnerabilities. Furthermore, once these vulnerabilities have been discovered and disclosed, um, they're now available for other folks who would use them for bad intentions uh, to go research and figure out how to attack these specific vulnerabilities that are known to exist. So it's really important to update and patch in a timely manner. Um, you always wanna make sure you also have the, the latest virus definitions for your antivirus software, um, obviously. Oh, sorry about that, I'm not sure why that happened. Um, obviously, if you don't have the latest antivirus definitions, um, you're not gonna be protected against zero day threats and, and the latest uh, versions and permutations of malware and virus that, that come out uh, probably on an hourly basis. Uh, and lastly, if operating system patches are deployed from a server located uh, at your physical office presence, uh, reach out to your IT department to see if you can continue receiving critical patches for your operating system. Obviously, as far as patches go, uh, operating system patches uh, would be at the top of a, a, a list of importance for keeping up to date. Uh, next point, uh, which is probably something you all hear on a regular basis, but I think it's even more important now, is to be cautious about phishing emails. Um, so would be thieves, unfortunately use times of crises like the current pandemic uh, as an opportunity to compromise systems uh, a number of ways, but certainly via phishing attacks. And actually just prior to um, kicking off this webinar today, I was reading the EMR ISAC infogram from today, and IBM has reported that coronavirus theme spam has increased 14,000% in the last two weeks. And there's also some pretty disturbing reports about uh, an uptick in, um, oh, I'm sorry. There's been an uptick in uh, ransomware targeting hospitals, uh, which is pretty sad to think about given the state of things and what's going on that folks would still seek uh, to profit by encrypting health records and, you know, putting people's lives quite, quite directly at risk. Uh, so in any case, it, it's important to stay vigilant uh, about phishing emails, um, especially if you see emails that come in the form of people you work with um, that are out of the ordinary. So things that, um, you know, you don't usually get an email like this from this coworker, but you might be inclined to think, well, we're all working remotely this is probably just something new that we have to do to facilitate work. Um, make sure you're sending any emails that you think uh, even potentially uh, are suspicious or could, or could be a phishing attempt um, to, your, to your help desk or your security team or whoever the group is that can take a look at that, vet that out, and then let you know uh, how to proceed. Um, you always want to err on the side of caution with this. And again, uh, you can expect a major uptick in emails uh, who either appear to be from legitimate coworkers or other companies you work with, or perhaps federal and state um, agencies 
uh, they could purport to claim, you know, ways to collect benefits or, you know, important uh, health advice, all sorts of different methods of attack is uh, you can expect to see uh, in the coming days and weeks um, and in, in an effort to gain access to your company systems. Um, so stay vigilant in terms of phishing uh, email attempts. Uh, another one to think about that may not come to mind is uh, if you are working from home, uh, try and, and do what you can to make your home internet connection as secure as possible. Um, I'm sure many of us use, utilize wireless internet. Uh, if, you, if you can, if you know how personally, make sure that you have the most secure settings um, enabled as far as um, uh, encryption type and key length and things like that. Um, if you don't, reach out to your ISP and, and maybe just have them take a look and, and verify that um, you do in fact have the most secure settings configured that are available to you. Always use a, a strong passphrase for wireless access. Uh, this might be a time to consider, you know, if you've had neighbors in the past that uh, you've given your wireless access to because theirs was down or just to help them out or whatever the case may be. Um, if you're now actually conducting work from home, and you're dealing with sensitive information, you might want to change your password uh, on your wireless to make sure that uh, only the folks who should be using it are using it. Um, and, and lastly, if your company does have a VPN connection available to you, uh, make sure you're using it. Uh, in many cases, you may be forced to use it in order to connect uh, to your company's assets, but in the event that it's optional, definitely exercise that option. Um, you know, that's going to give you an encrypted connection to your company assets. It's gonna remove any possibility of folks, uh, you know, maybe who are lurking on your wireless connection or somewhere in between your connection and your company's connection from being able to sniff packets and eavesdrop and, and see information that they shouldn't have access to. Uh, and lastly, just uh, a reiteration to, to continue to follow company policies. Um, it's just as important, if not more important, uh, when working remotely to continue to follow security policies. Uh, as it is in the office. Um, make sure you're familiar with your organization's expectations, uh, specifically regarding remote access, using personal devices for work, and backing up and saving work data. And if you're unsure if something you're doing is secure or not, uh, reach out to your system administrators or help desk and ask. Uh, I think there can be uh, kind of a feeling of, of being left on your own a little bit when you're working from home and you know, you might just be driven to try and get something accomplished by any means necessary available to you uh, without really stopping to consider if this is the, the best way or the safest way to go about it. So please, uh, you know, make sure you're asking any and all questions you have. Again, always gonna wanna err on the side of caution with this. It might take a few more minutes to get a response from somebody, but um, you know, the peace of mind of knowing that what you're doing is in fact the correct way to go about it and the safe way to go about it, I think is invaluable. All right, now to flip sides here a little bit and look at this from the organization and system administration side of things. Um, so kind of going hand in hand with what we were just talking about in terms of employees, is to make sure you're communicating your expectations and policies uh, to, to your staff. Um, it's critical that your employees understand what is expected of them when working outside of the office. Um, obviously, you can't expect them uh, to follow policies if they're not familiar with them. Um, as mentioned, the current environment, uh, or not as mentioned, but the current environment is a great opportunity to provide refresher training content uh, to staff on relevant policies, such as where they can find them. And again, and you're gonna hear me repeat this in several places in this webinar, but who they should ask if they have questions about them. Um, if formal policies aren't in place yet with your organization, uh, this is a critical time to at least determine some guidelines concerning working remotely and communicating them as soon as possible. Um, again, the more guidance you can give to your staff, the better the expectation is that they're gonna behave in the way you'd like. Um, if they're just out there on their own, using any means necessary to try and get their work done, um, you know, I, I would imagine, not intentionally, but there's gonna be all sorts of insecure things going on uh, with your data. Uh, and, and lastly, specifically provide guidance on how users should be connecting to company assets, uh, personal device usage, if it's allowed or not, and if so, what, how they need to be going about that, um, how to safeguard devices used for work purposes, and again, clear direction on who to contact in case of concerns or questions.
uh, highlight security as a priority during this time. Again, as I've touched on throughout this presentation, um, it's very easy for security to become an afterthought in times like these. Uh, you know, I think that the primary goal of most folks management and, and employees in this case is just to get up and running and try and continue to do business and generate revenue as much as possible, which is completely understandable. Um, obviously, these are unprecedented times and we're all trying to do whatever we can uh, to continue to stay to stay working. Uh, but I think it's equally important to know that there's folks out there who know this, who are aware of the situation and are who, who are going to try and exploit it, uh, you know, to gain unauthorized access or cause other costly breaches or infections or a myriad of, of different ways of, of infiltrating your information systems um, because of the, the current environment. Um, so again, communicate to staff the importance of maintaining information security while working remotely, uh, as well as identifying methods of contacting appropriate personnel with questions and concerns. Uh, again, ensure staff understand the expectations concerning remote working, uh, provide links to where they can review relevant policies and procedures, and emphasize adherence to policies which are not enforced via technical controls and, def and depend on users working within the documented requirements on their own. So for example, um, Let's say you have multi-factor authentication uh, enabled and enforced. You know for certain that your users are going to have to log in with their username and password, and then some second form of authentication, whether it be on a mobile phone or a token device, whatever the case may be. You don't have to worry about them uh, adhering to that because if they don't adhere to that, they won't be able to connect to your system. Now, if you have a policy that says, you know, don't print out any information that's classified on, on home devices, Etc. and you have no way of monitoring that um, remotely and it's completely up to the user's um, understanding and adhering to it on their own accord, um, those would be the ones that you especially want to emphasize during this time. Again, provide training content. Um, as mentioned, this may be the first time that many of your staff are working outside of the office, which uh, can be certainly overwhelming. Um, training is a, gate, is a great way to ease anxiety, uh, as well as to assist staff in getting up and running in the manner that you want. Uh, this training should include practical advice for assisting them to be able to work remotely, uh, as well as security focused content relevant to the new reality of working from home. Uh, training ideally should include threats your users are likely to encounter working remotely, some of which we talked about in the form of phishing emails. Um, but most importantly, again, make sure to clearly direct users on how to ask for help and who to contact with concerns. Uh, in my experience, being an information security lead auditor for going on five years now, um, I always say that I think people will always be the weakest link in security. And that's not a knock against people. It's just a fact. Um, you know, the great majority of user base, they're not going to have information security training. They're not going to know what they're doing, if it's secure or not. Um, and there's just a, a lot of opportunity uh, for things to happen unintentionally, I would say in most cases, um, that involve users just not being aware of, of what they should be doing or if what they're doing is okay. Uh, so I think it's super important always, but certainly in this time when folks might be isolated in their homes, um, to, to make sure they know that they have uh, resources available to help them, to assist them with any questions they might have, to be able to guide them, to let them know, yes, do it this way, no, you don't wanna be doing that, whatever the case may be. Um, and make them comfortable in reaching out to these to these resources to help them. Um, that's going to be the best way to make sure that uh, you know there's no mistakes that end up being a little bit more costly. Uh, again, touching on uh, or bringing into focus something I've touched on a little bit throughout this presentation, and, but for system administrators to utilize technical controls wherever possible. Um, that's gonna remove the human element in many situations, which is gonna reduce a lot of opportunity for unsafe usage of, of assets and information. Uh, many users don't know when they're potentially compromising security. Uh, having technical safeguards in place can prevent mistakes or ignorance, or ignorance resulting in a costly breach. Um, so a few examples requiring multi-factor authentication, requiring encrypted VPN connections, um, enforcing endpoint security compliance um, the, you know, it, it, with antivirus. Um, these types of things can go a long way uh, to secure remote users and company assets. So the more variables you can take out of the equation, uh, 
you know, with technical controls, uh, the better off you're going to be in terms of your overall security posture. And another really important thing for, for system administrators and management to do um, during this time is to reevaluate risk, evaluate newer change risks. Um, for many organizations, there's going to be a lot of users working remotely that, that haven't in the past. And maybe things have had to be changed. Maybe IP phones have needed to be sent home. Maybe things had to be configured differently on the company side to allow these devices to, to talk uh, to things coming from the internet as opposed from within the local office. Um, so take the time to evaluate the changes that have been made to enable business to continue and the risks or potential risks associated with those changes. Uh, think through the various roles in your organization and the systems they are now accessing remotely. So, you know, think about managers, think about schedulers, think about contracts, think about human resources is a big one. They're all usually touching sensitive information. Um, you know, all the various roles that you may have, top management, ownership, uh, you know, folks who are dealing with sensitive information, really think through how they're accessing that information now that they're working from home. What, if any, changes needed to be made on your end to enable that to take place? And if any risks are associated with the changes that have been made? Uh, you know, are, ask yourself questions like, is, is additional encryption required? Do we need more stringent user authentication? Do we need to implement multi-factor authentication? Um, you know, regardless of the change that's been made, uh, ensure you're using security as a factor when determining if the change has been completed successfully. So in other words, it shouldn't just be, can user A now access data A from home? It should also be, is this happening in a secure fashion? Um, that would be obviously our hope. All right, and I know I speak a little bit fast, so we kind of raced through that, guys. Uh, but I certainly want to take as much time as possible to answer any questions you have. Um, again, these slides will be available at pjr.com under the training section. And a recording of this webinar will be up on our YouTube channel, uh, Perry Johnson Registrar. Search for it on youtube.com. Additionally, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out to me at jlaffey at pjr.com. I'm going to pull up the questions tab now and uh, see what we have here. All right, so nothing so far, but guys, again, feel free, please. Uh, any questions you have, I'd, I'd love to answer it to the best of my ability. If not, I'd, I'd certainly like to thank you for joining us today um, and hoping that you and yours are staying safe in this time and hopefully not losing your sanity as we've all been cooped up for a couple of weeks now. And, uh, well, it looks like we, we're going to have a few more at least. So everybody try and uh, stay as safe and calm as you can and, and, and secure. Um, Again, thank you for, for joining us, and I'll hang out here for a couple minutes and see if any questions trickle in. Laura, you, you are very welcome. Same to you. My pleasure. I hope it was uh, informative for you. Bill, thanks, thanks so much for, for the kind words and thanks for attending. I appreciate it. All right, well, looks like everyone's trickling out. I'm not seeing any more questions. So again, thank you all very much for attending. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, 
and hopefully if it's nice you can get outside and, and get out from being uh cooped up in your houses and get a little fresh air and um i hope you all stay safe and take care and we'll be uh we'll be doing another webinar next friday i'll be talking about the most common ncrs in my iso 27001 audits that i encounter and some strategies to maybe avoid um, getting those for your own ISO 27001 system. Thank you again. Have a great weekend.